Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Now in this video we're going to look at Celery which is a distributed task queue for Python. Celery allows us to be able to execute tasks as asynchronous tasks. These tasks may be those tasks that may take a lot of time or tasks that may increase the load on our server and therefore uh, make our user experience a little bit bad. So think of things such as sending emails where you may have to wait for the email to be sent or you may have to wait for a file to be processed or uploaded using a task queue can save you from having to execute those tasks within the user requests using a task queue can also be important in case you want to do things such as scheduling of tasks that you may want to run in the future or tasks that you may want to basically be able to run at specific periods of time. So without further ado, let us look at a brief example of the architecture of Celery. Right here I have a simple diagram that I got from this specific website that can simply allow us to understand how Celery works. So the first thing that's most important is going to be the producers which are basically the applications themselves. The producers will produce messages and these messages will be sent to the brokers. So think of the broker, which is Redis in this case, as a medium through which the producer or the application or the client is going to send a message to initiate a task. And, what that's, and once that task has been initiated, there's always going to be a worker process that's waiting to execute that task. So think of this as the queue in which we have a task being enqueued and a worker process waiting for that task to execute it. When that task is within the queue, uh, the queue will act in a fast in fast out manner, therefore allowing the task that enters the queue first to be executed fast and therefore we shall just have tasks being enqueued, being executed by the workers, and then they'll be decued. So basically this is the entire flow and I'm just going to describe briefly what each of these do. So we have a producer, which is the app, just like I've explained. We have the broker, which is the medium through which the app is going to interact with the workers or you may simply refer to that as the queue. Now we have tasks which are basically the work or the unit of work like sending emails, uploading photos and stuff like that. Then we also have the result backend. Now after the workers have been able to execute the tasks in the queue, they may want to save those According to what we need, you may need to save those results in some sort of a backend. And that backend in this case is Redis, just like we're also going to look at in this video. Now, this is exactly what we're going to set up, but for us to set this up, we first of all have to have Celery installed. So for us to install Celery, I have a virtual environment I've created right here. So I'm going to go ahead and first of all, install Celery with pip install Celery and once I've installed Celery, I will also need to install the Redis client for Python since we are going to be using Redis as our message broker. So when I enter, Celery and Redis will be installed and once those have been installed, now I'm going to go ahead and freeze this onto a requirements.txt file. So once this has been created, I have uh, Celery and Redis installed within this requirements.txt file or frozen within the requirements.txt file. Now that I've been able to freeze them within our requirements.txt file, let us begin by creating a simple file where we are going to create our Celery tasks. So you may think of that file as where our application is going to be or where our Celery application is going to be. So to begin, I'm going to call this file uh, main.py. And this main.py file is simply one in which we're going to create our main entry point. So to create the main entry point for Celery, all you have to do is to create an instance of the Celery class that comes from Celery. So we need to first of all begin by importing it, which I'll say from Celery 
we are going to go ahead and import our salary class and once we've imported that salary class then the next thing we're going to do is to create our salary instance so we're going to call that the app variable or the app object and this is going to be our instance of our salary class but inside it here we first of all need to provide one more important argument and that's going to be the main of the the name of the module in which this app instance is going to be now for our case we have that as main.py and that's why we have provided it right here so once we've been able to provide that then we're also going to provide the broker which is basically the medium through which messages are going to be sent or tasks are going to be enqueued or added onto the queue now this broker is going to be ready in our case now i'm going to pull up my terminal right here and if i am um, to go ahead and verify if I have Redis installed, I'll do that with Redis uh, CLI. And in here, if I say something like ping, I'm going to have pong, meaning that I already have the Redis server on my machine. So I'm sorted. But you can go ahead and install it for your machine. I'm going to leave the instructions in the description of this video. So once that is done, I need to access the Redis server. So to do that, I'll just have to basically connect to it with this url so i'm going to set up redis on localhost and then shall have to specify the port to be the default port of 6379 and then shall also give an id of the database which is going to be id zero but you can feel free to use any id of your choice once that is set up all we need is a task so a task is simply a function that you may want to run so to run that function, all you have to do is to decorate it with the at app dot task decorator. And each function that has the at app dot task decorator is going to be automatically turned into a salary task. So for us to be able to define that, we are simply going to begin with a very simple function that's going to basically, let's say, add two numbers. So I'll call this add and it will take in, let's say, A and B. And once we have that, we shall just simply return A plus B. What we've done is to create our salary instance and also create our first task. But for us to run this task, we shall need some sort of queue. And for us to be able to have that queue, then we shall need to start what is called a salary worker. So a worker is simply going to be the process that's going to keep listening to our queue so that it runs our tasks. So for us to be able to run this task, all we have to do is to first of all, enqueue it or send it to the queue or add it onto our queue. But for us to be able to do that, there has to be the queue in place and there also has to be workers that are waiting for this task to execute it. So for us to be able to run our salary worker, we shall pull up our terminal right here and this will all happen in place where you have salary. So in this case, it's our virtual environment. So if we go ahead and say salary, uh, we have commands that run our salary or the commands that will help us to use our salary, which are all these listed right here. But what we need is to basically go ahead and start a worker. So for us to start a worker, all we have to do is to say salary and then we shall point to where our tasks are located and this is going to be within our main file so we shall provide the main module the name of the module in which the app instance is found which is our app right here so if we go ahead and specify that uh, we are going to see a list of options being returned but since we are starting a worker instance we are going to need to provide the worker option or command so if you go ahead and specify that then we shall have to point to the worker command and that will go ahead and start our worker but one thing we can notice is we are just starting our worker but we do not have any logging so if you want to basically monitor what's going on within our terminal with logging all you have to do is to add another option onto our command. So for us to be able to do that, all we have to do is to run our command again. And in this case, we shall have to specify the log level option. And what this will do is to go ahead and 
allow us to be able to log so we have to set the log level and let's just set it to info and once we have that then you shall notice that everything that shall be going on is going to be logged within our terminal right here we now have our, our connection to our redis which has been done right here you can notice that it's also going to search for neighbors and our salary worker is now going to be uh, working but you can also see that we have some more information right here so we have uh, concurrency for results are uh, disabled so we do not have any we're going we're not keeping track of any results as we're going to see we have our transport which is our broker url that we have right here so we are now connected and you can also go ahead and list the tasks that we have defined so far of which we have only one task for adding so now that we've set up our queue we've set up our worker let us go ahead and now execute or in queue our task so that is simple what we have to do is to go ahead and open up a python interpreter right here with python 3 sorry this is in uppercase so if i say python 3 uh, we are now going to go ahead and import that specific task we want to in queue so if we say from main while we define that task we are now going to import our add so add is a function but it's also a salary task so normally we would call it as add 2 and 3 or add 10 and 11 or whatever and it will simply return the result which is 5 but in case we want to enqueue it or process it in the background or process it within the queue then all you have to do is to call add dot delay so when you call add dot delay then what's going to happen is we'll have to basically specify these arguments the way we did right there so if we go ahead and add two and three we'll notice that instead of returning the result it's going to return an object of type async result now what happens is whenever we enqueue a task is going to return a result object and that result object is simply one that's going to allow us to understand the status of the execution of the task as well as other important information such as the result of executing that task so we might as well just go ahead and say result is going to be equal to add dot delay and in this case we shall provide our arguments let's say 12 and 23 and if we say result in this case we can do something like result and that will return our result object but in case we want to let's say get the status of that result then we are going to see that we have no way of keeping track of that result and this is happening because we have not set up a result backend so a result backend is simply one way in which you can keep results so that we can be able to check them out or be able to monitor them in a certain way so for us to be able to monitor these tasks and see the values of the results that we get after enqueuing this uh, all we have to do is to go ahead and first of all uh, get out of here so i'll get out of the python interpreter and then we'll have to provide one more important argument in here which is going to be our backend so the backend is going to be the same as the redis url and once we provided the redis url uh, that will be just enough to set up our result backend so just like we saw in our demo right here once we've been able to uh, set up or be able to run our task or basically execute our task uh, the worker is going to send that result to our result backend just like you see right here and if you want to access that result all you have to do is to basically access it from the result backend so we shall have some sort of like persistence for the results that are going to come from executing those tasks in our workers hoping that you've understood that now if you go back to our terminal and say python 3 or open up our interactive python shell in this case we can import our task so we can do something like from main import add and once we've done that then we're going to go ahead and also uh, be able to go ahead and 
in queue that specific task. So we shall do that with result. Let's call this result one and result one is going to be the result of adding, let's say numbers 100 and let's say 100. Very basic and this will go ahead and create our result object. So if we say result one is going to be 200. So we have not queued it or we have not added that specific task to the queue. But in case we in queue it with add dot delay we are now going to access this which shall be our result object so this result object is going to be uh, persisted within our result backend and if we want to access the let's say status of the result or whether the task succeeded then all i have to do is to say let's say result one dot status this will give us uh basically it will help us to understand the result status or allow us to understand whether the task failed or the task was successful so we shall also run let's say result dot uh, successful and this will basically return a successful result to show us if this was this was successful so basically this is a method that if we called it will return false basically showing us that this specific task that we scheduled or that we actually added onto our queue did not execute well so if we went ahead and let's say result dot failed uh, that will also return false because the task did not fail i hope you're now getting that whole idea uh and queuing is uh, just as simple as uh, calling the task dot delay which is going to have the arguments just like two and three we shall return the async result but in case you need to create the result object then you have to create a variable in which you keep the value of that object and once you have that then you go ahead and be able to execute those tasks now i think the reason that's why those are not executing is because we forget we forgot to run those but just like you see right here the tasks are going to be received and when they are received we shall be able to get our result objects just like you see right here and in case we want to find out the status in this case if we say result.status we shall see that the result is pending so results are pending and i think this is because we need to restart our salary because it has to keep track of whatever detail that we have inside our application instance so whenever i make changes or add tasks in here salary is not sure of whether those tasks were added or whether those changes were being made in here so even when you try to access the status we're going to note that it's going to be pending even when Celery has told that that they succeeded. So that's one important thing to note. So let's start our Celery. Uh, let's restart our Celery. So I'll press Ctrl C to stop the process. And when I rerun the process again, we shall now try to execute some tasks. So I'm going to get out of here and also rerun that. So I'll import our task, which is from main uh, import our add task. If we import it now let's go ahead and create our first result which is result one this result one is going to be a uh, a result of uh delaying or in queuing let's say 23 and 45 now that is going to return our result object so if we say result one it's going to return our async result if we go within our worker right here we shall see that it was received and then it succeeded therefore it was executed well and it succeeded if we try to let's say keep track of the status we can say result one dot status in this case we shall see success because it was successful and celery kept track of the results which wasn't something that we did before we had to restart the celery worker for us to be able to keep track of the changes that we made when uh, creating or when adding the result back in so that's an important thing to notice so we can also be able to notice if this failed so if we say result one dot failed uh, this is going to return false because 
they didn't fail. Uh, if we want to see if it succeeded, we shall say dot successful, and this will go ahead and return true. Now, this is just one way in which we can enqueue and execute simple tasks. At this point, we've looked at a very simple way in which we can basically enqueue our tasks and make them be executed within a queue. But as time goes on, you may also be in need of having to monitor these tasks with sort of like a dashboard. And that's where Flower comes in. So we are going to use Flower to set up a simple dashboard that is going to help us to monitor the tasks or that we created or some of the tasks that we enqueued over a specific period of time. This is also going to be important as it's going to allow us to be able to see which tasks failed, which tasks successfully ran, and the status of those tasks. So what we're going to do is to run our flower. So for us to be able to run our flower, of course, we have to first install flower with pip install flower. Once we've installed our flower, then we're going to go ahead and run our flower with celery. Uh, in this case, we shall run our flower with celery. Uh, we shall specify our app is going to be main. Then in this case, we shall call flower, which shall start. Uh, so what this is going to do is to go ahead and start a server on our localhost 555. So if we go ahead and open this within our browser, we shall now see that this uh, this dashboard right here is going to be set up that's basically going to allow us to be able to monitor our tasks. So just in case we are to go ahead and create other or basically enqueue other tasks, we shall see them being run in here. So if we go right here, we can see we have a pool, basically uh, our Redis and the process is it's being run on so we have the max concurrency or the number of workers being four we have the broker which is our redis and this is some of the information we have on our redis uh, such as the host name the port uh, we have the transport we have uh, we have the queues so this is the one queue that we have which is the salary queue we have some of the tasks so main.add is the task that we have and you also have some of that basically the arguments that we pass in here which is just that so if you go to our workers we have one worker which is that we go to our tasks we currently have no tasks that we've added onto our queue so let's try to add some so i'll go right in here i'll pull up my python interpreter with python 3 and then we shall pull up our task which is add so i'll say from main we're going to import add and when we import that we shall say add dot let's say delay two and three we call that if we come right here and refresh we'll notice that our task is going to be brought onto our queue and then we shall see the arguments that we provided in case we provided some keyword arguments we shall also be able to see them we shall see the results uh, the time we received and so on and so forth so that's just a bonus to just show you that we could also set up a dashboard that could help us to be able to monitor the tasks that we've been able to add to our queue and this is all possible because we have a result backend where we are storing all these functions or all these results <laughs> so i hope you guys have learned from this video if you've done so please click the like button it helps the channel and also don't forget to subscribe if you're new i'm going to be creating more content about celery in the future so i decided to create this as an introduction to celery type of video thank you guys for watching i hope to see you in the next video Thank you.